guys, it's Stephanie here on this uh, Sunday afternoon with a uh, tag share. If you made a few tags for Valentine's Day that I wanted to show you all. And then um, I have a little <clears throat> project to show you all, a little uh, trick. It's not really a tutorial, but it's a little trick, um, kind of a fun little thing to do. And kids can do this uh, as long as you have parent supervision. Uh, all you need is some moldable foam blocks like so and a heat gun and then any kind of object you have in your house um, so with that I'm going to show you my tag share real quick okay um, <clears throat> first of all for my Valentine's tag share um, I was inspired by some cards that I had seen from Muriel uh, Miss Cooper's Coop um, she is one of my favorite uh, channels her channel if you haven't tuned into her channel um, I'll try to remember to put the link below on her channel um, she has so many crafty ideas <clears throat> really neat beautiful she does beautiful beautiful work sorry about that I just realized I had a lot of outside noise coming in um, and she was using some graphic 45 tags now I don't have graphic 45 tags and I did not take the time to uh, go online and order some so what I did was I went online and looked to see what the dimensions were for the graphic 45 tags and then basically I measured out and made my own template so um, I the they're four by five basically and then I took a circle die to make the top here so um, this is my handmade version of the graphic 45 tags so I'll just show you real quick each one of these I have several sisters and I have a, a tag in mind for every sister this is for my sister who is um, a homemaker she is a mother she is uh, a, she works and she's always been very nurturing um, so this is a tag for her and I used uh, Graphic 45. Um, I used some cutouts from Crafty Secrets. I used some Martha Stewart flowers, um, some bling, um, a two different Graphic 45 collections. This was the Mon Amour and this was the Flourish. Can't remember what the name of that was did some stamping and then on the back I used um, I think this was a Prima Prima paper Prima journaling tags and then I'll write my message down here um, for the next sister uh, this is not only is Valentine's Day but it's also her and her husband's uh, anniversary my brother-in-law uh, this is their anniversary so this is going to be a Valentine's tag and anniversary tag um, again, using, uh, I think this was a cutout from a Prima, uh, <coughs> card, a tag, um, this was Graphic 45, this was Crafty Secrets, took some of my jute string and made a little, added a little button there and added some lace and added a wood veneer with a, just a little piece of bling up here, a felt heart that I actually picked up at a grocery store and then on the back now the back of this is some Tim Holtz paper from his seasonal collection as was the back of this it's very vintage looking um, this tag I cut out um, using a exacto template it wasn't a die it was a template that you use and I used a Prima tag on that added some lace <clears throat> and then just a little bit of kind of shiny fiber up there. And then the last one, this is for the sister who's very industrious. She is a uh, worker. She's very into um, getting her hands dirty in a manner of speaking. She uh, works. She does a lot of, um, oh, antiquing. Um, she is just the industrial one and so I made hers more of a decoupage kind of feel to it it has some Tim Holtz paper back here this little girl and the wings are from Crafty Secrets 
and just some odds and ends, little tags and doodads, and then I took a Tim Holtz. Uh, I believe these are called the industrial frames and added that with some lace. So it's got a little bit of girly and a little bit of industrial. And then on the back, <clears throat> um, this was a Prima tag. And then I added another, I, this tag I think I picked up a Tuesday morning. I added a little flower. Added lots of hearts. Graphic 45 there. And again, the Tim Holtz paper line in the background. So these were the three tags that I made for my three sisters. And again, I was inspired by Miss Cooper's Coop. Muriel, Miss Muriel. Love her channel, love all the artwork she does. Um, now, <clears throat> I want to show you all, I, I don't know how many of you all are familiar with the moldable foam stamp blocks. These come in a package of eight. Um, I believe I got mine off of Amazon, and they were about eight dollars. <clears throat> excuse me for a package of eight. And you can also use the bath foam blocks, but usually they're smaller and tend to be a little bit more expensive depending on how big the package is. Um, these cover a bigger surface area, so I like these better. I have used both. Um, so what we're going to do, <clears throat> what the magic is to this, excuse me for clearing my throat, is that you can remold these over and over and over again. So you can make many, 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 many different stamp images, backgrounds with the same block, clean it off, and you can remold it. And I will show you how that is. Um, and you can use anything as your surface. So I've got several different things to use. The first thing I did was <clears throat> I put some pearl beads in a paper plate so they didn't roll over everywhere. Just one second. Okay, now you need to have your heat gun handy. Um, and then this is, it's going to be noisy, so uh, I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. And then I'm going to stop the video while I do it because it is so noisy. So I'm basically taking my heat gun, let me get my electric cord stretch over here. Basically taking my heat gun and I'm going to heat this. And you will see this transform, okay? I guess I'll do it for the first time. So I guess mute your video, guys. This is this will be loud, and I'm going to show you what we're going to do with this. Because I want you all to see the transformation of the block. If you can see. You see, I don't know if you can tell how it's kind of changing. Do it for about 30 seconds. Okay, now as soon as you've done that, you've heated it up, just press it down on something, whatever you're going to press it down on. Uh, whatever object you've picked and we're going to use several different so you get the idea so you're going to heat it up for about 30 seconds or so and then while it is still hot hold it down on an object whatever object you're going to use as your background okay now it only caught a few of the beads but that's okay Pull them beads out. Now, what you left with is this right here. So I'm going to take my little memento dewdrop, and I'm just going to ink over that. Okay. Move this out of the way, and then I'm going to use that to stamp with. Okay, depending on how you want to do it, however much you want to do it. Now the ink, because it is the dye ink, it should come right off. Normally it does. Pigment ink, uh, I'm not sure about. Um, I don't I honestly don't know that it would come off as easy. Okay. So I'm going to clean this stamp as good as I can, make sure I've got all the ink off. All right. 
And then, get my little stamp sponger here just to get make sure I get all that off. Now to remold it, we're gonna we're going to heat it up again. Again, you can uh, mute your camera or camera mute, mute your video um, for about 30 seconds. You'll see when I'm getting ready to stop. And I want you to see how this foam reclaims its shape. Okay, that has reclaimed its shape. This time I'm going to lay it down on a piece of twine rope that I have uh, coiled up. Just a little piece of, um, not rope, what do they call that? Twine, I guess. Twine, I guess, is the word for it. Set these aside here. And I'm just doing one end of the block, but to make background stamps, you would want to do the whole entire block, more than likely. Okay, do you see how that left the imprint? Now, same thing, we're gonna run some ink. Run some ink over there, and I've just laid that down on there about 30 seconds or so. Just enough for it to hear the shape, adhere to the shape. Now, same thing. Okay, you see that? So this is a just, you can do any you know, I'm just doing, uh, you can do any shape. I'm grabbing a baby wipe here, guys. My other one's kind of dirty here. Or you can put a key, you can put several keys in it, um, and then uh, lay your foam, your heated foam down on the key shapes to get a background, a key backgrounds. Um, you can do, we're going to try some buttons, we're going to try some pearls stringed out, we're going to try some paper clips, there's just a variety of things, really no limit, okay, get my little sponge here to get all the, out of the crack, okay, again, mute your video guys, 30 seconds. Got it heated up. This time I'm going to lay it down on some paper clips. Now, because I didn't heat up the entire block, it's not going to absorb, you know, the whole block is not going to absorb um, the paper clips because I did not heat up the whole block. Let's see what kind of funky design that gives us. Turning my fingers blue, I know that. Let's see what we get on this. Okay, that's different. See that? Different design, guys. block off. Again, when you're using dye ink, it comes off much easier. If you're using pigment ink, I know that pigment ink tends to stain um, sometimes, and so, you know, I don't know, I don't think it would hurt anything, but I don't know that using pigment ink would not discolor your block. Alright, let's try 
I've got some flowers here. Try this. See, I'm going to turn my, the die is my fingers blue. So once again, guys, this time I will, you've got the idea, so I'm going to actually stop the video so you don't have to listen to this. Okay, I'm going to lay it down on my flowers. You want to hold and press my little wooden veneers that I've pulled out in the shape of flowers. Um, you can use the sides. And the cool thing about this is it will hold its shape until you heat it again. So say you've made um, a cool background stamp out of, um, oh, I don't know, twigs or out of uh, straw, you know, laid across and just kind of had a cool background zigzag design crossways design that will hold its shape until you reheat it again so if you don't get back to it for another month it will hold its shape okay okay Let's see how this did okay Okay, so you guys are getting the idea. Clean my stamp off once more. Okay, I'm going to reheat to reabsorb the, reabsorb the shape and I will uh, stop the video. Okay, this time guys I have heated the entire stamp block and I'm going to press it down on some uh, just a string of faux pearls that I have. <clears throat> Hold it down for about 20, 30 seconds. Give it a good chance to absorb the, the feel of the pearls. While I'm doing that, I'm going to grab a little card here. Okay. Let me see what that did there. Now, I'm going to take my ink. I just laid it down on top of these pearls here. This is my effect here. I'm going to lay my ink and just run my ink over the top of it. Just kind of a nifty little background here. I'm going to take my little card base. This is just a David Tutera card base. Put it in the center. Lay it down. Let the ink transfer. Doesn't have to be precise. This is a handmade stamp, so there's the point of it. Now I have the base of a really nice card. So if you guys will hang with me just a minute, we will finish this card. I'm going to wipe my block, foam block off. I'm not going to remold it because I may want to keep this stamp for a while. Um, and when I, I will tell you this, pa this comes in a package of eight. And when I bought the package, I actually split it up amongst a couple different friends because, um, because you can use them over and over and over again, unless you just, you know, are wanting to keep the same, you know, and actually you can get double side out of them. And you can, like I said, you can also use the sides, uh, to imprint. I didn't feel like I needed all of those. So I actually divided those out so bear with me guys I'm gonna get a few things and we're gonna finish this card okay guys I have taken a die and let me tell you what uh, this is a Doris die okay I've taken this die and I have created a window of background and this is actually what we're going to use for our card okay I've used the same Doris die uh, to cut a smaller portion this will be the inside of my card bear with me okay so I have taken a Doris die we're just playing guys this isn't anything fancy but I have taken a Doris die and I have taken what I cut out of it and set it aside and then I have trimmed down the outer edge to fit on top of this uh, card and it this card I'm not sure if it's an A2 or A6 I Honestly, I can't say. I know my card size is really well, but I'll tell you really quickly here. 
this is an A2. So I'm going to just put some um, adhesive tape, little strips here on the side. And again, we're just playing. I just want to show you guys the options, the possibilities. Um, you know, this is kind of an off the cuff card. I actually had not intended on making a cut on a card, but just thought I would show you all, you know, what you can do, what can be done. Got a little bit of tape on the side here. Let me get that off. Of course, I'm doing it with blue fingers. Okay, bear with. Now for the inside, I have taken, this is the cutout from the inside, and then I've taken the next one down and also cut one of those out so that I'll have something to write on on the inside of my card. And I have no idea what kind of card this is going to be. Right there. Layer, layer, layer. It's kind of strange doing this with blue fingers. And hang on just a minute, guys. Let me get, grab a sentiment real quick. Guys, I grabbed a chalkboard sticker off of this um, American Craft stickers that I had picked up the other day at Tuesday morning. They were $1.49. And I just picked up a thank you. And I'm going to set it right smack dab in the center. Actually, before I do, I'm going to do something else here really quick. I'm going to grab some of my jute string. I actually, i tell you what, I use the mess out of this. I love working with all of, with this jute string. And I'm just going to maybe tie it in some pretty, pretty big bow, pretty big uh, loops here. Uh, let's see what we can do with that. It's not exactly even. Well, let's see here, guys. Oh my goodness, there's nothing like doing it off the cuff. And you know, since I'm not, I'm recording, but I don't have editing capabilities on my Google tablet that I know of. So um, the editing is, you know, <laughs> the editing is stopping and starting, stopping and starting. So at, you know, in lieu of not doing that, I'm just doing this on the cuff. So, um, you know, this is crafting live. Tie that like that. And I wonder if we can just do it. I don't know if that really looks. Crafting live with Scrappy Steffi. How about that? Okay. We're going to do this and call it a day. I don't know that that's great and grand, but this is what it is. Yeah, I don't like that. I'll tell you what, I'm just going to pull that out. All right, I'm just going to pull that out. If I decide to go back in and put a flower later, I can. So that is uh, just a quick little card. And basically, you know, the, the background was pretty and the background... Um, you know, had no rhyme or reason to it. It's just a background. And I just made this card just because I just wanted to show you what you can do with the foam blocks. And as you can see, I still have the uh, background from the, the just a string of pearls that I used. If I wanted to get rid of this and put another background, I simply have to reheat it. If I wanted to keep it and use this side, I can do that and reheat that. If I want to do this side and reheat that, I can. Um, you know, the, the the possibilities really are limitless. They go just as, as much as you can think. I mean, you can take a larger string of pearls and heat it up and do it like that. Well, let's just try that real quick. Let me show you this. And we'll pause it for the sake of the video. Okay, I've heated it up. I'm going to lay one strand of pearls down here and just impress it in. Um, and I could do this on, you know, I could lay the pearls. I'm getting back in the camera here. I could lay the pearls down and put the block on top 
uh, don't ask me why I did not. Just for whatever reason I did not. I didn't think about it, I guess. So I'm going to press these into the pearls. And it gives me that. I feel like I'm kind of making a mess. I'm just going to run that across the edges here. There's my blocks. So, um, an easy way to make interesting background stamps. Okay, guys. I've just uh, added a little flower to that. Clean off your uh, stamps. Um, an easy way to make the background stamps. And I apologize for the video being so stop and start, stop and start. But again, that's the beauty of not having editing software on your tablet. I have a Google tablet and um, I, I don't know even if there's an app out there that allows me to do the, the fun things that you guys with the uh, YouTube editing does. Um, so I apologize, a professional... Uh, channel video maker person I am not how's that but I hope that you guys get some fun and some good out of the um, just the fun little things that I have picked up along the way easy things um, you know I do crafting on a budget anyways uh, I know it doesn't seem like it sometimes with my hauls but actually I, I will say my hauls compared to some hauls are I think are pretty small sometimes um, but anyways, just wanted to show you guys a fun way to make background stamps using the moldable magic stamp is the company that makes these moldable foam stamps. I picked them up uh, at Amazon. They were, I think, $7.97 or something like that for eight of them. You can also, again, use the bath foam blocks. Uh, they are smaller, so you're going to get a smaller surface area. Um, since it's a toy, sometimes they do get a little pricey. I did pick up some, and I, I want to say I got mine at Dollar General. Um, you know what? I may have even got them at Dollar Tree. But they were very small, um, and I did I found that they didn't work as well, They but just because you don't get as good a surface. So, I hope you enjoyed this, and I just wanted to share. Thanks for watching.